Hey, welcome to the channel. If you're into very average, very poorly constructed car reviews, then you're in the right spot. Well, if the car I have today doesn't make you go oof as it drives on past, then I'm pretty sure nothing will. This car is awesome. Check it out. It's a Mad Max Interceptor, a Pursuit Special, black on black, whatever you want to call it, this thing is awesome. Unless you've been living in a post-apocalyptic wasteland drinking gasoline, you already know where this car comes from. That's right, the Mad Max films. Well, more specifically, Mad Max 1. And more specifically, this isn't exactly from the movie. This car itself is a replica. So let's get stuck in and take a look at this beauty of a car. But before I do, I just want to do a real quick costume change, really to get into the mood. Here we are, looking much better. Now this is how you got to dress if you're going to do a review of this bad boy. So let's start with the disappointingly obvious. Although we all wish this was the case, the Interceptor was never a production car that you could just order from your local dealership. Aww. The movie car started life as a 1973 XB GT Ford Falcon Coupe, which on its own is a seriously cool Australian muscle car. But back to our beautiful Interceptor here. And let's begin by using this Interceptor to step through the modifications that were made to the original XB GT Falcon Coupe. But before you get your MFP issued knickers in a twist, I want to be completely honest and cover a very key point first. The replica you see here was built using an XC Ford Falcon, not an XB. This means there will be some differences to the actual screen used interceptor, and I'll highlight some of these as we go. But at the end of the day, who cares? Do you think Mad Max would have been arguing with Goose over chassis length and interior fabric swatches? Or do you think he'd be out there burning rubber and kicking ass? So firstly, the most standout thing is obviously the colour. The original XB used in the Mad Max was white with black accents on the bonnet, However, the Interceptor received the now famous black on black paint treatment all over the exterior. Although all badging was removed, a new logo now appeared on the car. The Main Force Patrol or MFP symbol with their motto, maintain the right. One of the more subtle features, and that's saying something as there is basically nothing subtle about this car, was the addition of these flare extensions over the front and back wheels. Speaking of extensions, you gotta love this new front end that got whacked on along with these stripes across the lights. Believe it or not, this actually comes from a production part that people could choose to install on their own Fords back in the day. The fiberglass panel is known as the Concorde front end and you could buy it from a panel shop here in Melbourne. Whilst we're on the topic of fiberglass, there was the roof and rear spoilers which were added on. Whilst the roof spoiler can look kind of goofy for most angles, when you get it just right, the view really makes the car pop. The dual exhausts on the original car were rerouted to these awesome looking Zoomy style side exhaust pipes that exit just before the rear tyre. And whilst we're down here taking a look, let's hear these bad boys rumble. Save the best to last. I'm of course talking about the Wii and through the hood supercharger, the Scott Injector hat. In the movies, Mad Max would turn on the supercharger when he needed a little bit more power whilst he was mowing down tow cutters gang on their motorbikes. So just like the movie, this supercharger is controlled by this little red toggle down here by the gear stick. This turns on the supercharger belt and gives the appearance that it's running. It's this supercharger that really defines the interceptor and it just looks so cool and so menacing. Okay, now let's look inside the car and we'll check out what changes the movie makers did to turn this into a formidable pursuit special. For the screen car, there wasn't actually that much done to the interior. But for this car, there are all the standard Mad Max gizmos, but also some additional creature comforts. And again, remember, this is a Ford Falcon XC, not an XB. So the interior layout is a little different to the screen used car. I'm going to indulge myself and begin with by far my favourite interior modification and it's actually so small that you might even miss it. Old Max Rokotansky has placed an image of his wife and his kid in the centre of his steering wheel. They were of course brutally mowed down by Toe Cutter's gang on their motorbikes. 
and I like to think Max keeps this here, as sometimes he's like, hang on a second, why am I killing members of this motorbike gang? And then he glances down and remembers, ah, oh, that's right, they killed my wife and kid. Down here, we of course have our infamous prop switch that turns on the supercharger. It's actually a two-speed rear end switch off a truck. So if you feel like beefing up your Toyota, but don't have the budget, then just pick up one of these bad boys and strap it to your automatic transmission. It might not do anything, but you can at least pretend that it gives you a few extra hundred horsepower. Mad Max is a police officer, so of course, he needed to outfit his car with a light and sirens. There is a handy replica prop police radio console, which was also added for the movie. We have a PA system, so you can yell things at people from inside the car. Hey, Kundalindi, I think I found your hand. And then there are some non-movie additions to this replica, like a CD player and air conditioning. And I mean, hey, just because you're vengefully killing people while civilization falls apart, doesn't mean you don't wanna pop on your favorite tunes and stay cool during summer. One final thing I want to cover in the interior is all the signatures you've probably seen located on the dash and the window shades. Over the lifetime of this car, many cast and crew have added their John Hancock. Whilst Mel Gibson is yet to lay a pen on the old gal, you can probably see people like Steve Bisley, who played Goose, or Hugh Keys Byrne, who played both Toe Cutter and Immortan Joe in the recent Mad Max film. One signature of note is Murray Smith, who was actually a mechanic that worked on the original film. Believe it or not, he was actually given the original Interceptor as partial payment for his work as there was not enough budget left to pay off the film crew. He then modified the car back to a street legal version, but after about a year he sold it back to the production crew so they could kick off filming Mad Max 2. Now let's take a closer look at the donk. According to Barry in the Mad Max movie, the Interceptor had a dual overhead cam engine and thanks to the blower made 600 horsepower at the wheels. However, once you remove the movie magic, the car really just had a standard Cleveland 351 V8 engine, which made around 300 horsepower. Not bad for back in the day. This XC also has a 351 Cleveland engine, and of course it features that fake supercharger bolted on top and other bits and pieces to run all the extra stuff in the interior. But excitingly, the owner of this car is actually about to do an engine swap and put a real supercharged engine in here. That will mean that not only will this replica look the part, but boy will she go to. So you've seen it, you've heard it, and you're still asking questions? Or well, how about we go kick this thing in the guts and take it for a spin? I mean, what do you want me to say? This thing is just damn awesome. Sitting in here, MFP jacket on, dressed like Mad Max, looking out over that blower, going to chase down toe cutter, pretty much living out every single middle-aged man's dream. So besides a raging alcohol addiction, there isn't much that I have in common with Mel Gibson. I don't have a thick head of hair, no baby blue eyes, no chiseled jawline, but I tell you what, with this jacket on, sitting behind the wheel of the Interceptor, you feel every bit just like Mad Max. And as I said earlier, driving this car is living out every middle-aged man's dream. But when you're not lost in your own thoughts of pretending to be Mad Max, you certainly catch people out of the corner of your eye when you're driving past going, oof. Now don't mind me, I'm off to get toe cutter. <laughs>